You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Welcome to the Cricket Podcast, where we're going to be talking about T20 cricket today. England are taking on India. They're 1-0 down after one match. Um, I think it's it's fair to say that India B are quite a lot better than England A, England B. They're definitely better than India A, India B. That didn't really make sense. I'm Jack Hope. I'm joined by Cameron Ponson B. Ponson B? Perfect. You get better Perfect. every time. One of them. It's one of them. Uh, yeah. I call him Cameron. I'm not going to use the surname again. <laughs> how, are you, how are you getting on, Cameron? I'm doing very well, thank you. I just said I've been having a... I've kind of been on holiday this week without, without meaning to be, So, which has been nice, but I, I think I need to return to reality. Hence the appearance here. The yeah, podcast. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's, what's been your favourite activity on your holiday? Oh, I had a great day on Wednesday. Me and uh, my best mate from uni um, went to Wimbledon in the day, and then we left at five and we went and watched the T20 at the Oval in the evening, which was a very, felt very luxurious. Felt like we were spoiling yeah. ourselves. So it was good. Actually, it's it was nice. it's the, the two main sites of South London sport. I know, it was very... football from the, um, <laughs> from <laughs> he, was giving, he was saying, this is the poshest day of my life. And I was like, hey, yeah. Uh, who, was, who was playing at Wimbledon on, on Wednesday? Not many people, really okay. not many people. But we saw, <laughs> um, we saw a great, because um, I hadn't been in like 10, 10 or so years and he'd never been and so we like we went and watched some doubles on court three which was fine and then we saw this amazing juniors girls match between uh it was a girl from canada and a girl from poland and it was unbelievable i i don't i was watching i don't really understand how people are better at tennis than that and obviously they are because one of the girls was 15 but um i don't really know tennis so i was like this these girls are good i recommend yeah yeah, tennis to me is a little bit like I think cricket is to most of the general population. Like, I, yeah. I don't really understand what's going on. It seems to take a very long time to, to get anywhere. Uh, five um, sets, way too long. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> watch the men's doubles game. They like, were like hammering it out for one set. And I was like, well, you've got to do that like essentially four more times. <laughs> too much. Uh, yeah. Um, we're going to talk about T20 cricket. But before we do that uh, just a message for our listeners you can you can follow us on twitter or instagram at the cricket pod um after the great follower exodus during the england v india test match um we we've picked up some steam again some people have either come back or or we've had some some churn and some new people come in but if you know if you're listening to this uh and you want our sarcastic sarcastic tweets about pirat Kohli, then um that's where to go and we're on patreon patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod from four bucks for four pounds i think it's five bucks a month uh you get uh, access to a bunch of stuff some exclusive shows we've made uh a discord channel there's some data i think out there um for you yeah, we, we we curated uh, on the ipl which you know it's not really ipl season but it's there um so to get involved um cameron i'm gonna put you on the spot can you can you describe in 30 seconds what happened in the cricket yesterday uh yes so India batted first. It went really well. A bunch of really good players whacked the ball quite far. Um, England had gone for a new look uh, set up where they go with an extra bowler over an extra batter. Despite having lots of different bowling options, India still got themselves up to 200. And then in reply, uh, they got the new ball swinging around corners. Jason Roy couldn't hit it and got four of 16. Josh Butler couldn't hit it and was uh, arguably got, had the better time of getting north of one. And England just kind of found themselves in a bit of a, bit of a hole. Um, there was a tiny rebuild from kind of Harry Brook and Moeen Ali, uh, but eventually they kind of ended up losing by 50 runs? 50 runs. Yeah, so it was the ballpark 50 runs. Yeah, no, in fact, it was dead on 50 runs. Perfect. So, um, there we go. Good recollection. Yeah, I, India were uh, exceptionally good. Um, I, I, you know, we, we, we've been saying for a while, I think, on this podcast that, that some, of the, some of the backup players might be better than some of the the 18 players and we'll test that theory over the weekend and we'll, we will get to that later in the show but batting wise you know Deepak Huda wasn't necessarily surprised by him but he he, he sort of came out and took his opportunity uh Rohit Sharma didn't clog things up at the top Surya Kumar Yadav we know how good he is uh probably the, the main man though was Hardik Pandya um you had a stat on him and you shared it before the show and I was genuinely surprised Do you want to reveal it for the I audience do. I'll go again so that, that was um Hardik's first ever international T2050 he actually had the best, he had his best performance in T20 internationals with both bat and ball, which is a pretty special day. But I just could, I couldn't believe that. I mean, batting, yeah. even if even if you're batting kind of six or seven in 
um, kind of T20 cricket, someone of that quality you'd expect at some point they'd have got over the line a few times. But there we go. It's not about milestones in T20 cricket, is it? No, no, it's about um, other stones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, yeah, you, exactly. You think like Hardik Pandya, surely he's got 50 off 25 balls at some, yeah. at some point in the past. But no, uh, he, he did bat really well. Um, as in most of the Indian team. I, I have to say, I wasn't massively impressed with England's give everyone a bowl and we'll hope that one of them comes off approach. Um, was there was there anything encouraging from an England point of view? Uh, did they just come up against a really good team? Was the pitch a bit flat? Uh, I think, I think you, Chris Jordan's encouraging. I feel like he's having a bit of a renaissance at the moment, but I don't know if that's just kind of him having kind of taken the reins at Surrey and Surrey kind of waltzing through the group stages. Um, he bowled, he bowled, he had by far and away the best figures of, of the England team. You've got three lads who've gone over 10s, four lads if you include Livingston's one over, and he's taken two for 23 off four. Um, I know, I mean, his record's been pretty below average for a while for England. Mm. I think that's fair to say. Um, but I don't think, I think especially with Morgan gone now, his position in the change room's potentially even increased in importance. Um and so if he's kind of kind of picking up this form that originally got him into the setup and carrying that into uh, the World Cup, that's got to be a positive. OK, take that as a positive. OK, there's, there's, there's one positive. And what nice. I thought was, was, was kind of strange. So it was um, it was Butler's first match as, as captain. I don't know if he's captained anywhere else. Maybe, you know, but I, I can't recall him ever being captain apart from no, like, the odd game where Aaron Morgan is, is sort of, you know, wasn't available for selection. Yeah. They were like passages of play. And I'm thinking here, particularly when Matt Parkinson was bowling, where England had the weirdest fields I think I've ever seen. Like Mark Parkinson bowled an over. I think it was the Deepak Huda when he had two short third men and a backward point and uh, a short fine leg in the ring. And then everyone else was sort of just like scattered around the boundary. And it, it just left this colossal gap for, for Huda. And it might have been that. You know, I remember Hardik Pan just smashing one through extra cover. And it was like, oh, he's hit that really well. Bad luck for him that it's going to go straight to the fielder in the ring. And then there's no fielder in the ring. And it ran away for four runs. So it was like, what is going on there? Um, and there were, there were at least sort of two or three other boundaries hit just through point. You know, the classic thing that happens in T20 cricket where, where the batter plays a nice shot, it goes square of the wicket. And a field is on the fence to pick it up and throw it back in for a single, uh, getting cut. You know, it's like it's like a, a, a mini win for for a spin bowler. It's just going for four runs. It was like, where's the man that, that's supposed to be there? I don't know. Maybe I was I'm being a little bit picky there, or or maybe there was a plan that I, I I'm not. I think you know, it could be interesting with, to. with Parkinson because of how slowly Parkinson bowls. Like, there's no like you 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 basically you have. You have third man and fine leg out for a pace bowler because there's pace on the ball so the ball can kind of get down there. And that's why the kind of signal that a slower ball might be coming is yeah, like third comes up to short third and then mid off goes back to long off. Um, and then you've got bowl, if you've got spinners and there's no pace on the ball and he's even less than no pace on the ball with Parkinson bowling. You're like, well, we act, we don't need anyone on the boundary behind the behind the wicket it's almost like baseball where like something behind squares like a foul ball you're not going to get any runs for it and so then they just sack off everyone in front of the bat but the weird thing then happens like you say is if you get cut or you do drop short and someone manages to hit the ball either like through cutting it or reverse sweeping it behind square yeah you're done like it's over it's four runs um but it is fun I, like t20 fields is so often you you don't really because of how good fields are often on tv you don't notice how like and you go to a game you're like well there's no one around the bat ever like even in test cricket like you have, have four slips in a gully and then like a cover and a mid wicket and that's it but the ball always seems to go to these places because these guys kind of set their fields pretty well um but then yeah when you see what a field which is so unusual and that there's no one in front of square in the ring um for the spinner you go well that's isn't that really easy it's just no fielders I was, I, I, it was quite easy, I think, is the, <laughs> the, the answer. There. So that was strange. I mean, I don't want to take too much away from India. I think um, they were they were very good. Who who do you reckon sort of advanced their case most? So there's there's definitely a little bit of pressure on on Virat Kohli in particular now. I think to do something over the weekend to to stake his claim for a World Cup berth. Um, who's who's breathing down his neck? I think you'll be able to give a better answer than me on this, but I would, my, I, I'd imagine it'd be Deepak Huda in that I, 
you guys know follow these guys very closely in the IPL. He's kind of someone who, as someone who isn't an avid IPL follower, he's kind of advanced his case. He came in for the Islands games, did unbelievably well. And you're like, okay, but you haven't done it against like a massive international team yet. And then to come in straight away and kind of get his 33 off 17 in that kind of very attacking, kind of powerful way that someone like a Virat Kohli anchor might not, like that's an, as much as, it's not necessarily an indication for him just as a personal individual to be like, oh, I should be playing ahead of this player. It could also be a way of showing India, this is actually what we want our number three to be doing or what we want our top three to be doing. It's kind of taking the game straight away and kind of running with it, basically. Yeah, yeah, I know. I get what you mean. So he's, he, may, he may have not necessarily advanced his case, but advanced the case for a more attacking blueprint overall. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I, you know, I was impressed with him. I, I thought, I, you know, I, I do think England bowled at times hilariously badly. Um, and, and I was sort of looking at this lineup, and I'm, I'm not really sure. In a, in a, you know, in an England best T20 eleven, which yeah. one of them, which ones of them make it? So, you know, Parkinson is definitely going to be drop, dropping out for Adil Rashid. Yeah. Um, Mark Wood's going to come in for somebody. Um, Maybe top league, you know, yeah, maybe. I mean, and then Joffrey Archer will play if 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 he's fit. I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, you know, I I I I don't know how much of a, a fantasy land conversation you want to have, but um, oh, the he's most definitely, fantasy. he's definitely going to be in the in the lineup somewhere. And then you know, between Wood, Archer, Adil Rashid, you've got you've got the the basics of a of an okay international. T20 bowling lineup. I'm not, I, I think yeah. there are some question marks around Wood. I, I think Adil Rashid might be a little bit overrated in England, but he's, you know, he's an international quality leg spinner, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and Archer is, if, 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 it, if he returns that level, amazing. Then they've got to find like one other bowler and do something with Livingston, Moen Ali, and I don't know, maybe Sam Curran as well. Um, is Jordan that other bowler? I mean, I guess he is, isn't he? I mean, like for, for as you say, it's, it's the Jordan Renaissance. Um, sort of continue today. Uh, I, I, the thing I don't, and maybe I'm wrong about this. The thing that that, that I don't love about this England bowling attack, besides, um, besides the fact that they're, they're easy to sort of smash, is that so many of them don't really have a weapon in 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 terms of. That's interesting. Yeah, you know how they might actually go about getting a a wicket. I mean, like Sam Curran and Reese Topley. I don't necessarily get it as a, an, an opening pair. It's not quick. They don't really move the ball too much. They don't have many variations. Neither of them are actually even particularly good at hammering a line of length. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, what is it that you are going to do to mm. scare an international batsman? And I, Ty Mel Mills, I think you can lump him in to some extent. Parkinson, because he can only spin the ball sort of one way. It, it, it again, it's like, what is the thing that's going to, get out a, a good player here. Like it's, it's, I, I just don't see what you're doing that isn't, that, it, that is sort of, it's exceptional. Um, is it, am I, am I being a bit critical there or? I'll be interested because I think it's, it's I think, I wonder whether in, in the first half of your point, kind of like, oh, we're missing Wood, Archer, like Rashid comes back in. Like these, these can still, are these still the best bowling options in your mind for England currently? And you just think they might not be like up to scratch to be at that kind of elite level or you're going, oh, well, let's trade one left arm for the other, and I'll be playing David Willey, basically. Well, I mean, uh, right. So uh, it, that's that's a good question. I mean, I I think they're probably not, and, and I think that the weapons point is is what I'd come back to, and and what I think England need to look for, or or, or train people to do a little bit more of. Um, so if you look at David Willey, he, he's not necessarily an exceptional international talent but there yeah. is a weapon there he is a decent power play bowler it is conceivable yeah. that david willie gets a couple of people to snick off in, in in a power play and yeah and that you know that's his weapon i, I think it's almost inconceivable that, that sam curran and reese topley do that because they don't they don't hit a line of length and they don't really move the ball too much so it's like what are you what are you actually expecting to get out of these two um yeah. other than a, a batter's mistake and then later in the innings sort of top topley comes back and I kind of get the attractiveness of him. He's six foot seven. He bowls like not too slowly. He's left arm, but he has like no variations. So he's just sort of coming in and it's like, well, he's, he's probably going to try and hit a back of a length. So I'm going to play a baseball shot and, you know, yeah. hope I either top edge it or blast it over mid wicket. Like it's, 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 it's a really pretty easy game to play. 
as a batter. Now, if you juxtapose that with 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 what India have got, and we'll we'll get onto their bowling lineup because I, I, you know, I, I before the there series, I, I, yeah. I thought India were going to win two one because they're a much better bowling team, <laughs> like much much better. But Booby Kumar, you know, exceptional in the power play, like that's that's as good yeah. a power play spell as you will see in in T Twenty cricket, like full stop. Ashdeep Singh can bowl you know, variations at the death can hit a Yorker and he can swing the ball up front. So he's got like two weapons. That's, you know, that's great. Hardik Pandya, probably the weakest bowler, but there's stuff he can do. He can crank it up to mm. like 90 miles an hour. He can, he can hurry a bloke up. Harshal Patel can bowl about 47 different variations and, and Yuzi Charhol is like a, a, a great leg spinner who can spin the ball both ways. Like it's all of those people yeah. are, are, are good players with an extra thing that they can do that can, in theory, win the match. For, for India on, on any given day. And I just don't see that with the England bowling attack. And I, I think, you know, is there someone else they should be picking? I mean, I, we always bang on about Benny Howe, but I, I don't see how he makes that bowling attack worse. The stuff he does, like he's much more in the Harshal Patel mo, 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 uh, mo, mould than um, any of these guys. Uh, I, I Howell, think, yeah, go on. Has Howe be, how has been selected for that England Lions squad, hasn't he, against South he Africa? He has been. He's in the, he's in the, he's in the B team, yeah. That'll be but, really, yeah. I'll be so interested to see how he go, goes there because I think he's a player who he's so like, depending on it, I think traditionally in cricket, he's a very unfashionable player, and then kind of in the new age cricket, he's a very fashionable player. And like, yeah, I don't know, like, it's the choice. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and we, we've both had conversations with Dan Weston where you're like, right, this is the bandwagon, I'm on it, let's go, this is fun. <laughs> um, but I do think he'll have to do like until. I think basically this Lions tour will be incredibly important for him or the Lions series, because I think if he does then perform in an England setup, they're seeing it up close, he's getting out international players, then I think they go, oh God, is there actually something here? I don't think, I, I think Benny Howe could have kept on doing what he does in the blast every year for the next 20 years. And I'm not even sure, I'm not sure if he'd have got a look no, in no, it. I, yeah. yeah, I, th- so, I think um, you're probably right. Um... But that is exciting to see. Like, could it change? Like, this is this. Well, is... I mean, I, I, you know, as a from an England perspective, I, I think you hope it does. Um, but because that he's just such an uninspiring bowling attack. I know it's got loads of variation and stuff, but like, you know, <laughs> there's nothing particularly exciting about another mm. part-time spinner coming on to bowl. Like... So, <laughs> something I'm wondering about these three. So, uh, uh, an analytical like observation of the first game was that. Joss Butler has opted to go for an extra bowler over an extra batter, and that is a tactical shift from uh, what England did under Morgan. Something I'm wondering whether it is, and this is literally me making this up, but I think it could there could be something in it, is they're seeing if like Curran and Jordan can do the business with the bat one higher than um, one higher than they otherwise would have done previously. Sam Curran's had a really good season this year with the bat. And I like I know from like when he was a teenager at Surrey, they always said this guy's a batter who bowls. And now it's kind of he's only like 24. Yeah. And now this is kind of like coming into fruition. I'm wondering whether they're like, I, I have I have this kind of world in my head where I'm like, I feel like England are really back in Sam Curran here. And they think he could be like the business if he can be back this guy who can do both, be just a genuine all-rounder. If over the next, they've got what six T20s having or five more this month. If over the course of that five, those games, like Curran and Jordan don't do, can't do anything with the bat at seven and eight, they go sack that. All right, we'll have, we'll shuffle, shuffle them back one down. But it is a case of like when you say if we get Mark Wood back, if Joffre becomes fit, Rashid comes straight in for Parkinson, and you want to play Wood, Mills, and Joffre and Rashid. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven. Can you trust someone like a Sam Curran at as high as seven in the international team? I, I think to some extent that debate has already been decided by some of his IPL performances. I, I, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised actually this year if if Sam Curran goes for mega money in the in the in the IPL auction because I think teams there see him. I, I, I actually think this in, in T20 circles, people see him as a top six batter who can bowl you yeah. two overs rather than a, a genuine all-rounder. I think they, That's interesting. they, they yeah. like the possibility that in really good conditions, he could swing it up front and, and cause some damage. It never really happened. But, the, you know, that is the theory on the bowling side. Um, you don't really, I don't think you really want him bowling after the first four or five yeah. overs of the match. Um, but batting-wise, I think there's, there's definitely a view that he is 
capable of being a, a, a top six international batter. Um, I, I, think, that's like that. I think that's the way they're going with that. Um, which is pretty, yeah, I mean, which, which, which sort of will be interesting. Ross actually asked a question and, and, you know, Ross was on the podcast. He said, Ross, Ross Arsh, should we just play to our strengths and play as many batters as possible to chase down totals instead of playing proper bowlers? Um, or, or better yet, what should the balance of our team be? So I think this touches on the question. Maybe, maybe England would be better off like throwing two more batters in and, and, and just being like, well, what's the difference between like some part, like Liam Livingston bowling four overs and one of the actual bowlers getting pumped? Like what, <laughs> what, do, you, what do you say to that? <laughs> well, I, get, I, I, feel, I feel like the point there is you, you, you can make up a bowler just out. Or you could, but can you make up two bowlers instead of one with uh, Livingston, Ali and Curran if you don't really want them to be bowling like the whole time? So that you can be like, can we get eight overs out of these three rather than four? And then you fit in that extra batter, or you play the test team and just get a red ball well, in there. And do I, it. I mean, yeah, that's that is potentially the answer, isn't it? Just get rid of all of these players and play the test eleven in T Twenty cricket. T Twenty is not the future of yeah. cricket anymore. Mate. It's, <laughs> it's, so the um, test game is back. It's, uh, we were we were joking during the England India series that England's test team could be India's T20 side. Not not necessarily this one. I think they put out a, a pretty dubious 11 uh, against South Africa. And I, I think I don't think England's testing would beat the T20 side from yesterday, but I, I do think the, the, the team of a million anchors would struggle against England's test 11, um, the, the, the way they've been going recently. And obviously as well, like um, England, England are going to bring in, you know, a couple of players from, from that squad for, for the next... For the next match, yeah, we should talk. We should talk. We haven't mentioned it really at all here. We should talk about what happened when England batted. Um, it wasn't pretty, unless you're an India fan, in, in which case it was like the best opening spell of all time. Yeah. Uh, Booby Kumar, like, well, and Arshdeep Singh as well, they were, they were hooping the ball around corners. Like, it was unplayably good uh, what, what they came up with in the first five or six overs of this match, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing. And I, I think um, Joss Butler's dismissal is one of those. You remember, you know how occasionally uh, international teams will clip up a highlights package of like every ball of Jimmy Anderson's spell. And so then you see him bowl like four away than one in. I think yeah. that's, you'll see Butler's dismissal and you go, oh, he's been bowled by an in-swinger, but he's been, <laughs> that's the first ball he's faced and Kumar's been hooping them away from Roy at the other end. So that's every, that's every kind of signal in Butler's head, like, right, he's, he's swinging the ball out. It was, yeah, it was fantastic. And it was, it's, um, that same kind of mentality of uh, like kind of run towards the danger is what Butler was talking about afterwards. Where he was like, we needed to whack it. But I think he's kind of half joking. He was like, the ball might not have swung as much if we just smoked a couple into the stands and like duffed it up basically. But because they couldn't, <laughs> because they couldn't, <laughs> because they couldn't hit it, that never happened. And so they just, just get worse and worse. Like J- Jason Roy getting four of 16 is like, is a, like a, it's a, I don't know. I was trying to think of a, a sufficiently awful adjective. Um, yeah, it's a stinker, but like you, it, it, it's not like it's. I think that's more testament to the quality of the bowling than like it's not like it's an unknown person going, Oh, is this guy good enough for international cricket? It's Jason Roy, and they gave him like, a torrid, torrid time up top of it. But yeah, so good bowling, they got on top of it. And then, if, if as soon as you need tens at the beginning, and if you're not going to get any up top, then you're fucked, really. Yeah, um. It was, it was, it was, it was just a bit too good. I thought, um, doesn't, you know, if, if the one that Joss Butler's bowled off, you know, bounces over the stumps or just drops at his feet or something like that, then maybe they do whack a couple, but maybe not as well. Like it was, it was, Jason Roy could have been batting with a tennis racket. And I I think he's probably not hitting some of the, the the deliveries that he was, he was having a go at. Like it was, it was, it was moving too much, um, for a player that's, yeah, he's not he's not internationally renowned for his ability to play the moving ball, is he, Jason Roy? It was, it was kind of a nice reminder about, well, a, a, a nice reminder of his brief the test team again, test opener, <laughs> yeah, like in two thousand nineteen. That was really fun. Um, I enjoyed that. Yeah, uh, Roy Butler and Milan, uh, not Milan Livingston, only getting four runs between them is going to make it pretty hard work as well yeah. for the rest of the batting lineup. Um, we saw Harry, was it Harry Brooks? No, it wasn't, it wasn't his debut. It was his wasn't second his debut, time no. he's batted. Um, he was okay. I don't know. I feel yeah, like he's I, I, a little out of his depth at certain points. Um, I saw I saw a review of it. It was pretty much like he was he was all right. It was yeah. fine. 
I think they are much <clears throat> not. Much, I was about to say much like current, and then I went realized that's my personal agenda, not actually the uh, feelings of the world. Like there's so much goodwill and like belief in Brook at the moment. He's next cab off the rank for like every single team. Mm. England are gonna like try the whole the whole uh, kind of ethos of the new McCullum era. If you believe it's kind of bleeds into the other teams, is that you just back these guys to the end, and Brook's gonna get a lot of opportunities over the next month. I think England played 12 white ball matches in the next month. It's three ODI. Three. This could be wrong. I think it's, it's something stupid. Uh, it's, like... so it's, it's, it's three and three against India. They might do three and three. And it's three against... and three against South Africa yeah. as well. Um, and um, yeah, and it's it's like 12 and 25 days. Like it's so much um, cricket. So um, yeah, lot, yeah, we'll see. We'll see a lot of um, we'll see a lot of Harry Brook over the coming month. Yeah, um, I think it was quite a difficult situation to bat in when you're basically out of the game. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> before you come in and then you've got to try and hit Yuzi Charhal into the stands three times and over to, to get your, your team back into it probably you know I, I don't want to make loads of assumptions about the quality of leg spinner that Brooks played against but probably I, I, I'd venture doesn't have a lot of exposure to yeah, but that's, that's, leg that's, the, so. that's the point of that's the point of going up to it international is. cricket, isn't it? You're like, yeah, oh, these guys are the best now. Oh, okay. Um, and then India sort of wrap it up. A couple of wickets for Ashdeep Singh on, on debut. Uh, and then they're going to drop him from the squad. So, uh, well, Bob. Sounds about right. Um, Got a bowl better. Three, yeah. Three and a half overs, one maiden, 18 for two. And it's um, <laughs> a one-way cab ride to Heathrow Airport for him. Um, Hardik, 33 for four. He, he did bowl pretty well. Um, and, yeah, that was the... That was the, that was what happened. Um, so I've just been signed out of the, the thing. What's it called? Um, Zoom. Ross Zoom. must be using it for something. Yeah, but it's, nice. it's yeah, it's slightly irrelevant to the show. Um, <laughs> the weekend at the weekend, India have decided that. I mean, this is this. I mean, we had a question about this. Um, uh, this is a good a good juncture for it uh, from Leon on Twitter. Why are bilateral limited over series so Arsenal winning a cup on their pre-season tour of the US after tests have been on? And it does, it feels a bit like, I mean, there were passages of the game yesterday where it was like, oh, these people literally don't care if they win or lose. Like they're just sort of yeah. out having some fun in the sun. Uh, India changing their entire squad for the weekend is sort of another indication that, that maybe these aren't the most important matches of all time. Uh, well, you know, where, where do you? I, I actually really enjoyed watching some cricket where like nobody really cared who won. Um, <sighs> after the Test match, where it was quite, you know, it was intense. People were like up for it. In, in this, it was like, uh, you know, is it? A I just feel I, I, I can't. <laughs> I feel like that's got kind of always been the case of like bilaterals to an extent, though. Like you can't. Who can really remember a great? We we people always talk about the great kind of one day bilateral series being like England, uh, New Zealand, like the first one of like Morgan's era, because everyone was like, what on earth is this? Like, this is so new. We don't remember this. I can't say I remember. You might have one. I, I, I can't say I, I look back and remember any bilateral series, really. And no. you, you can say that's like, I guess you're always, it's always going to be fun to watch. You're watching like the best players in the world play cricket and maybe that kind of fact that they play so often it allows them to kind of free themselves from any shackles and be like you know what if you're an England player I'm gonna have 11 more hits in the next 24 days I'll be okay like, I think be um, right. I get the impression that they mean a bit more in India um to Indians and to the Indian team than they do to to maybe England fans um like they are uh, you know, for a lot of England fans, international ODI cricket and T20 cricket is somewhere below the county championship in terms of their list of priorities. And, and the county championship isn't particularly high on, on many people's list of priorities. Like, so it's, it, it, it is, you know, outside of the World Cup, it is treated yeah, a little bit like an irrelevance. But um, I, I think maybe in India, that is, that is a bit different. The intent that India played, India, you know, England were out on a day out and India yeah. did seem to play to win. Um, it was, and they won. Well, good was, job, then. They, they deserved it. They more than deserved it. Um, they they really really did outplay play England. Um, so they, they are switching up their score for the weekend. Probably the the big questions are, are, are going to be about who comes in. Um, so the the guys from the test team will be available, which means Shreyas Iyer is about. Virat Kohli is about. Um, Jadeja is in contention. Rishabh Pant obviously, and and Jasprit Bumrah. 
as as another potential player. So, do you see do you see the five swaps? Or I was gonna ask you that question. I think yeah. you're, you're much better at answering that than me. How many of those five would you would you bring it? Is it is it four? Uh, it- well, I mean the, the question it the question is like how much of a free hand for selection do you really have? I think. Um I don't I don't think anybody personally in, in their in their right mind would would pick Virat Kohli over the other options that they have available. I and mean, we didn't even see Sanju Sampson or Rahul Tripathi, both of whom are, I think, comfortably better in the format than than Kohli is. Um, but but like they're not Virat Kohli. They don't have mm-hmm. 70 international centuries under their belt or, or whatever it is. And, and Kohli has dominated T20 cricket at the international level in the past. So the you know he he comes with this you know massive reputation. Um, has there ever been any indication of of like Cody changing his not really. method? I think it might he might have changed it and made it worse. If anything, <laughs> I, I don't. I just don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think he's properly adapted to how modern T Twenty cricket is played, particularly through the middle overs where you have to play against a lot of spin, and he just effectively doesn't try and hit boundaries enough in Mm. in overs seven through to 15 and that's but also like and and kind of counterproductively for the side isn't getting out all the time so it's sort of like yeah an extended period of one and or or one a ball um it is yeah shuffle through all your bowlers it also means like what you want really from a a player is that they'll they'll make a match up at the other end difficult to turn to so left hand right hand combination like if you've got that at the crease it makes bowling an off spinner a little bit difficult in case they end up bowling five balls to a righty like that isn't so much of a problem with Virat Kohli because he's just going to like knock that guy for a single so if you've got a left hander at the other end you haven't even got the matchup option like it's not even busting that it's just like a guy who is playing some nice cricket shots and the commentators are a fawning over like uh, yeah. so I, cover I, yeah, drive I mean, does I, look good man <laughs> it does oh. look good yeah um and he has some skills like at the end and, and at the beginning he's still still capable of hitting pace bowling around like it's it's not a complete bust he's a good player yeah but they have some amazing players and they're just not going to use them um which is strange and i think you could probably say the same about rohit sharma opening up i think you could possibly argue that Rishabh Pant wouldn't be in their best 11. That's that's much more subjective, that, I think. Like, I think it depends on what you want and who else you pick. Like, Rishabh Pant is definitely there or thereabouts. But you could say, we want Dinesh Kartik as the finisher and we're going to pack our middle order with Sanju Sampson and Rahul Chapati and um, Surya Kumar Yadav. And there's no room for... And um, we've got Hardik at six, so there's no room for Pant. You could make that argument. Much, much, much more subjective, I think. I think that's far less clear-cut. Yeah. Um, Jadeja will probably come back in, I think. Fraksha Patel, he's a much better player, but you never really know with India. Um, and then Boomer definitely plays instead of, I, I guess, Arshdeep, um, which is harsh on Arshdeep, but Boomer is like the best. So yeah. um, you can't uh, argue that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think, I mean, I, I, I think there's a genuine possibility that India pick a team which they think is stronger, but is actually Actually worse actually quite a lot worse than the team they played at the weekend um, That's so funny. Oh, no yesterday but, but it's uh is there is there a world where Co- is it a kind of morgan scenario where morgan like knew kind of you could increasingly say feel get the feeling that new morgan knew the writing was on the wall and was like i got to get out of here before the world cup is there a world that Cody kind of knows that when like there's a chance he's not actually going to play in the world cup or he's not i'm not saying he's going to retire although he might you never know I don't um, think so. I don't. I don't. I don't know who's going to have that conversation with him. Um, and I don't. I don't. Yeah. I, I. I don't get the impression that he's aware really of the the fact that things aren't going that well for him. Like he doesn't behave like he's. It's not. He's not the best player in the world, does he? He's like giving it the big one, shushing people yeah. that are batting way better than him. <laughs> like it's. It's like you know. It's. I, He's a guy who's got no runs in Test cricket for ages, averaging 27 over two years, or whatever. He's done a little bit better in ODI cricket, and he's blown hot and cold in, in T20 internationals. He actually did have a good series against England about a year and a bit ago. Um, so it's not not all awful, but he was terrible at the IPL, like so bad that they were, you know, there were there were think pieces. Is 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 Patadar better than Kohli? Like that kind of <laughs> that kind of thing was going on. It's should we play KS Barat instead of, of Virat Kohli? And it's like, well, 
once that is once people are saying that you, where are you, we you, you probably shouldn't be first name on the team sheet for international cricket there was there was i saw an, an, an anonymous source talking about so you know take this with a pinch of salt yeah yeah an, an, an anonymous source talking uh, allegedly an, an indian selector a senior indian selector who said that this was a big series uh, the, these two matches and the three ODIs were, were important for Kohli if you want to get in, in the World Test Champion, uh, well, not World Test Championship squad, the uh, the World the the T Twenty World Cup squad, um, and you know if if that is true, then maybe there are people considering this. Um, it's also interesting that they the the source seemed to think that like his performance in the ODIs would be a strong indicator of whether they should take him to the T20 World Cup, which sounds ridiculous, but actually makes me think that's far more creditable as a as a source because that is it does appear to be how indian selectors think they do seem to think of 50 over cricket and t20 cricket as like the same thing so um yeah which explains well, to some extent i think why they still roll around with 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 some of the players they've got and the lineups they pick because they end up picking like very good odi lineups like there's no doubt in my yeah. mind that the in in india's odi team virat kohli plays and, and richard pan plays but it yeah. isn't that format like it it is a different format of cricket that they're playing so i think it's i think it's gonna be increasingly interesting whether because england obviously for that um holland series had no like just i just picked lads who had only played 2020 cricket for the last three years and so whether actually that actually kind of happens now where do you need to play 50 over cricket to be good at 20 over cricket or do you like if you it can you just whack it in 50 over and you're like, that's the same skill, power play, done, last 10 overs, done. I, so, I think, you know, ODI cricket has some different things that you need to be able to do. Like Joe Roo, England's second best ODI batter after Bairstow, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, would he be, would, you know, is he re realistically that close to the T20 team? Possibly he's third in line after like David Milan and, you know, maybe Ben Stokes coming back at three or something like that. Like it's not... It's it, but like he's you know averages fifty five or something in ODI cricket and and that the, you know being able to score at near a run a ball for twenty five overs is really useful in ODI cricket. It means you can build yeah. massive scores, sets up platforms like it it completely in the gates those sort of middle over bowlers that are there to try and you know squeeze a few wickets out of you because you're not going to get Joe Root out, you're not going to get Virat yeah. Kohli out, you're not going to get Babar Azam out. But those players transferred into T Twenty cricket. Scoring at a run a ball or just over a run a ball for 10 overs in, in T20 cricket, unless you have like uh, the, the biggest bunch of sloggers you've ever seen batting around this guy, it's, it's probably a suboptimal strategy or at best it's, it's neutral for the team. Nice. Um, so that's, that's, you know, tactically, I think why the, you don't want too many people like that. And, and the other thing is like, we talk about anchors and stuff like that. There are better anchor type batters in that India side. Surya Kumar Yadav can score at 1.3 runs per ball for, for, the, for that period of time. And that gives you five, 10 extra runs at the end of the game. Like it's it's similar type of batter, similar type of stability. He can play all the different types of bowling. So you're not going to get him in a terrible matchup situation. And he's going to score more runs. Like, so why... Why not? It pick does that sound guy? good, though. Like, it's why not have that guy over the guy who's going to do all the same things but slightly worse? Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's that. We had a few more questions, we'll get through these. It's been a little bit longer than we thought. Uh, VJ said, uh, Should India change a winning team just to bring in the big stars like Kohli, Pant, and Jadeja? Well, I've given my thoughts yes or no. Do Kohli, Pant, and Jadeja come in, Cameron? Yes, get them yes. all in. I want to watch Virat's cover drive. I want him to get. I want to see him get twenty five of twenty five, and that'll be my money's worth. It is. I mean, it is probably more fun, isn't it? When when you're yeah, all the A list, it's more play. fun when he gets out. It's more fun when he goes well. There's uh, yeah. my enjoyment of the game is is really far detached from the performance of India, but it's quite <laughs> closely attached to the <laughs> to the Virat Kohli being on the screen. So get him in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No disrespect to Deepak Huda, but. He, no, I'm he's not, never I'm not changed my mood in, for that. in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, right. So I thought that was another question, but I don't, I don't think it was. And we have one from um, from from VJ on our Patreon 
channel, patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod, should bilateral T20s and ODIs be abolished and perhaps replaced with equal test match opportunities for most test, ma- uh, test nations to give the fascinating baseball game time to space uh, time and space to grow so what are you gonna are you uh, are you gonna be uh, i think vj is proposing some kind of test match absolutism there and um that, that we yeah. only play white ball cricket domestically i i so i think it's actually like a weirdly interesting question which i don't think is a nice way to uh, that's probably okay. quite rude to vj actually <laughs> um i because I remember hearing this, uh, like this argument about like we should make all T20s domestic, and then like the World Cup is the only international thing, so it becomes a bit more like football in that sense. I mean, that actually sounds really cool. I, I think that could work, but the problem is cricket's such a lopsided game in that you have the haves and the haves nots. So we mm. have the haves in England, India, Australia, etc., and the have nots in the rest of the world. Um, the white ball kind of international white ball cricket is such a kind of Lifeblood is that, is that is that the right word? Yeah, yeah, or something yeah. Like you, that? Can, you can get a lot of money for putting an ODI. Yeah, like it, it has to exist for the good of the kind of game as a whole. So I don't think it really works. But I wouldn't be surprised if in like 20, 30 years that is that that is the world we're looking at. Not so much just so we can play loads of Test cricket, uh, but more so just in the general structure of a of of the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally wouldn't be averse to something like that if there was a proper development fund for nations that weren't england india and australia like i've, yeah. I've got no pro- i've got no problem with a three-month ipl that you know that runs from march to the end of end of may or something like that <clears throat> um i think that'd be great i would rather i would rather watch an ipl match than what i watched yesterday like i, I didn't think the cricket was particularly good i think england's bowling in particular like you just it just it, like it just objectively is not good i'm not watching elite elite level cricket there i'm watching some fucking part-timers um <laughs> you are though all those lads are in the ipl as well but i don't know they're not all in the ipl as well though are they like yeah, matt but, parkinson but, is not in the ipl not yet reese reese topley is not in the ipl um, has it, i reckon he has, has he been in the ipl i'm pretty sure he has not been in the ipl sam curran is not he, he is in the ipl but yeah, they've all played in the blast though um you know some of them some of that some of the others were in the ipl i I will give you that but it's um and all of the indians of course were in the ipl but i don't know i just i i I just i I didn't love it i this is a question for another time but are all of those indian players good enough to be an overseas player in an ipl team i mean that's that's (sighs) oh that's a good question i think yesterday's team probably yeah is, is, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to quickly look through. I'm not going to go through each each one, but I, I just want to see if there's any that stand out as people that wouldn't be. Uh, Rohit, yes. Kishan, probably, although he blows hot and cold. Deepak Huda, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. The the one I'd, I'd question, I, I don't know if there's much room for like an Aksha Patel. I think he's good enough to play in the IPL, yeah, but there's like 50 a- Aksha Patel so sort of yeah. knocking around. Yeah. Um, uh greatest test bowler ever though so he's got that <laughs> he was <a> good <laughs> um, right, lad, uh, should we wrap up this show uh, yeah thanks for coming on cameron um is no, there anything you much. want to plug uh not really just okay my, on my twitter is on my twitter fine just and cool. that's where all my stuff is all right well enjoy your weekend everyone um and enjoy the t20 cricket i think india are going to win maybe all three now so three in india Cool. Bye.